Hey guys, welcome to another video. I'm Vlad Excel, I'm a professional runner and today this is part two of Recovery for Runners. So hopefully you had a chance to see the first video, um, the first six tips that I use to improve my recovery. And today we're gonna go through another six ways you can improve your own recovery. This year alone, I've ran over 3,300K, which means that I've ran over half a marathon every single day of the year. So recovery is a massive, massive part of my own training and routine. And hopefully some of the tips that I'm gonna share with you today will help you to be able to run a bit longer, recover a little bit faster, and get more out of your runs. Before we go into those recovery tips, please remember, that all those little recovery tips are those little one percenters that if you're gonna add into your training and into your routine, you know, you're just gonna improve by 1% here, 1% there. None of those recovery tips are gonna make you a world-class runner. It's about that consistency and staying on top of doing them on a regular basis. And same as you're running, it's about consistency, getting out there very, very often because after all, consistency is key. So jumping into tip number seven, which is diet. Probably the biggest part of recovery because we are what we eat. And I'm gonna divide this into two. So part number one is gonna be your everyday nutrition intake, your everyday diet, and then the post-run nutrition and diet. With my everyday diet, what I do try and do is keep away from foods that are gonna increase my inflammation. So obviously as runners, we have inflammation in our body, as normal people have inflammation in our body, and it's part of the process of recovery, and it's very normal. But obviously when those levels are getting higher and higher and higher, that might slow down our recovery, increase pains, which means that it's gonna affect your next run. So I'm, when I'm thinking about my everyday diet, I'm trying to stick to foods that are gonna lower that inflammation level down. And those foods can be like green leaves, fruits, vegetables, things like nuts, walnuts, and almonds are super, super high in anti-inflammatory properties that they have that can help bring that inflammation down. And what I try and stay away from as much as I can is processed foods. And few examples of processed foods are French fries, sugary drinks, white bread, pastries, anything that is very, very processed will increase inflammation, will cause a little bit more pain on your next run, which you know will affect your run. So a quick overview of my own diet is breakfast. I'll have a big, big smoothie with a lot of greens, a lot of berries, a lot of bananas. Then for lunch, I might have some whole grain bread with smashed avocado and nutritional yeast. And then for dinner, I'm gonna try and keep it a little bit heavier where I get most of my calories. And that can be things like potatoes, sweet potato, rice, curries, pastas, and always add a big, big salad on the side to make sure that I get some raw vegetables as well. With post-run food, my main goal is on my easy runs to try and have some calories within half an hour to 45 minutes after finishing my run. So I'll finish my run. First thing that I'll do is I'll have a big tablet in a big glass of water, then I'll have more water, and then I'm looking to get some food within 30 to 45 minutes after my easy run. After my key workouts and hard workouts and long runs, usually I'll try and have some calories before. So same kind of process, I'll make sure that I get my Bix, that way I can get all the vitamins, minerals, nutrients, electrolytes that I need straight after the run. But then also I'm gonna have maybe a banana with me or, or some kind of a food that I can consume straight after the run, even though I don't feel like it. So on those hard training sessions or long runs, I try and get some calories in me as soon as possible. Number eight is active recovery. I know a lot of runners would do the long run and then kind of plan to just chill on the couch for the rest of the day. My mentality is a little bit different. A lot of the recovery happens during easy movement. So I try and add in some active recovery into my training. So that means if I do my long run on Sunday morning, maybe in the afternoon I'll do an easy bike ride or an easy walk. Or even if I don't have time to do any of them, 
I'll try and get three times 10 minutes of just lying with my feet against the wall, just lifting them out, flushing the blood down. So I'm looking to get that blood flow to help me and improve recovery. So ways that you can add in some active recovery in your own schedule is say Tuesday is your speed work day and you do your workout in the morning. I would try and do an easy walk, an easy cycle, maybe some yoga at night, just so you can get some blood flow and help that recovery. And then even the day after, or even two days after that key session, I'll still try and get some active recovery in. So it's a very kind of a good um, routine to get into where you add some easy walking or easy cycling during your week. So you're not looking to get a workout out of those days. You're not looking to improve your cardio or get stronger. All you're looking for is just blood flow, just rolling the legs at very, very easy pace, just getting that blood flow in your legs. That will really, really help recovery. And it's been a, probably one of the biggest parts of my own recovery is keep on moving. Um, you know, obviously we get a big chunk, hopefully we get a big chunk of resting while we're asleep. But during the day, I definitely like to try and move as much as I can. So if I do a run in the morning, I try and move a bit around the house, walk around during the day before my second run. And then even after that second run, I might still try and do some easy walking at night, some yoga at night. I'll lie down against the wall and flush down the, flush down the legs um, to get a bit of blood flow because it's all about that blood flow in your legs. Number nine is magnesium. So I'm a big, big fan of magnesium. Obviously I supplement with magnesium every day, but I also use those high concentrated magnesium gels on my muscles. So usually I would probably do it at least once a week where straight after a hot shower, I'll get out of the shower and I just put a bit of the, that magnesium, highly concentrated magnesium on my legs and it kind of stings a little bit, um, but I definitely feel a little bit fresher after it. And I know it overall it helps my recovery. There's a few brands out there, I'll try and link a couple down the bottom, um, but there's some brands that have different ingredients in them. So they will have like tea tree oil in them, um, peppermint oil, you know, and they sting a little bit more. What I found those um, pure magnesium ones actually feel a little bit better and I feel like I get a lot more out of that product as well because I'm getting just magnesium and that's what I'm looking for. I don't really care if it smells nice or it doesn't. Um, so yeah, pure magnesium gel that I put on my legs at least once a week and also Epsom salt baths, which I do probably once every two weeks. Um, so we probably have about 10 kilograms of that Epsom salt and once every two weeks, I'll just have a bath with about three or four big scoops of Epsom salt inside and try and relax a bit. And, you know, I don't know if it does too much for my recovery, but mentally it's just nice to unwind a little bit in the bath and hopefully all that magnesium inside the water and the warmth ha actually helps the recovery process a bit. Number 10 is hydration. And I'm talking about your daily water consumption throughout the day. I'm a big believer in actually drinking a lot of water throughout the day. And usually when I wake up straight away, I would have at least four to 500 ml of water. And then when I'm working at my desk, I always have a water bottle with me. So that way I know that I consume anywhere between three and five liters of water a day. Obviously I get some water through the food that I eat because I have a lot of fruit and vegetables as well but I always try to keep on top of my hydration levels. I'm not a big fan of running with water and usually I won't take any water with me on runs that are, that are like, you know, up to two hours long. Even in summer, I can run for two hours without any water with me. But what I do the second that I finish that run is that I really hydrate and I force that water down. So usually after a long run, you know, I can drink anywhere between three and four liters within like two or three hours of finishing that run. Um, so I really force that water down. Also, I stay fairly hydrated throughout the day. So when I do start my run, usually I'm a bit more hydrated, which means that my body doesn't have to dig as deep um, and I can recover a lot quicker from those runs. So make sure you always have a big water bottle with you at your workplace. So you are drinking regularly throughout the day. 
And also remember that during summer and winter, you might feel a little bit less thirsty during winter, but your consumption of water should still be high to help your recovery, help you feeling strong and help your overall health as well. Number 11 is get dry, get warm and stay warm. And that's something that I've learned a few years ago from researching a lot of triathletes and the time I was doing triathlons. Yes, about two or three years ago, I did six half Ironmans in six months and somehow I was ranked number one in my age group um, for that 70.3 distance of the half Ironman distance. Um, but what I've learned with triathletes is that they're trying to get dry as quick as they can after training and after racing. So that's something that I've been using um, in my own training on a daily basis. So if I finish a run, first thing I do is actually I change clothes and that can be you know, changing my shorts, t-shirts, socks, and even shoes. So I wanna get as dry as I can as soon as I can. That's when I do the run away from home. If I do the run, if I finish my run at home, you know, I finish that run, have some water, and then jump, in, jump into a warm shower as quick as I can. Once I get out of the shower, I try and stay as warm as I can. Um, and that means that I might have a warm tea just to keep that warmth level up in my body because the warmer I am, the faster that recovery process can start. If you are shivering cold after your runs, recovery is not really started yet till you kind of warm up, till your body gets to that comfortable position that recovery can actually start. So definitely try and get to the point that you are dry after your runs. So plan your runs in advance in the way that you do have a change of clothes. And even if it's warm and it's hot out there, change a t-shirt. You don't wanna be doing your cool down or your drive all the way home with wet clothes. I always have towels and a change of clothes in my car. So when I do finish a run, first thing I do is I get dry. Number 12 is foam rolling and massage sticks. We all have one of those at home. It's usually somewhere in the corner getting dusty, but I use the foam roller literally every single day. I know a lot of people use it when something hurts, but you wanna be using it on a regular basis so you don't get to the point when something hurts because that means it's already too late. It's like, you know, if your car breaks down in the middle of the freeway, it's gonna be very expensive to get it towed out, get somebody to call, probably the, you know, the way you gotta fix the car and how much fixing needs to be done is gonna be very, very expensive. Where if you would have served this, the car on a regular basis, you would have not ended up, you know, broken down in the middle of the freeway. So that's the same way that I look at foam rolling, is I do 10, 15 minutes every single day at night and that kind of keeps my body away from injuries because I know that if I'm injured, I can't run. I have to go and see a physio, which is going to cost a lot of, a lot of money. It's going to take a lot of time. Um, obviously, I'm going to get frustrated for that I can't run. Um, so I make sure that I stay on top of it by using my massage stick for about five minutes a day and then foam rolling for another good 10 minutes a day. So you don't want to be doing it when something hurts. Well, you do want to be doing it when you are tight and sore, but you wanna do it on a regular basis, so that means you won't get to the point where you are tight and sore. Obviously, it's a great way to get more blood flow, which it, that's what I'm all about, and it can help a bit with also improving your range of motion, which is always helpful if you are a runner. All right, so let's recap all those recovery tips. We had a number one, which is compression socks, number two, massage gun or massages. Number three, the combination of sauna and cold plunge. Number four, sleep. Number five, running on softer ground. Number six, Bix hydration. Number seven, your daily diet and diet post run. Number eight, active recovery. Number nine, magnesium gels. Number 10, daily hydration. Number 11, staying dry and getting warm after your runs. And number 12, foam rolling and massage sticks. So as I was saying before, those are the one percenters that if you can add into your training routines, it will help your recovery. You will be able to run a lot better. There's a lot of other ways that you can improve your recovery. And if there are any other ways that you help your run recovery, please comment them below so we can try and help other runners to improve 
the wrong recovery. Hopefully you got some value out of this video. If you did, smash that like button and I will see you in the next video. Peace.